Ben, welcome to Below the Bar podcast. How are you? I'm all right. I'm great, thank you. How are you doing? Stuff. Yeah, all good, all good. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, obviously, everyone knows you as the CEO and founder of Box Raw, but I want to get to know Ben on a bit more of a, of a personal level. So let's talk about, firstly, your journey into boxing, right? How did that start? When did you first lace up the gloves? When did you first step into a gym? Why did you step into a gym? Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the, the first time I was 12 years old, the same gym that you, know, you and I used to train at, Red Corner. Um, they were doing a free um, class over summer. They'd advertise it in the paper. Was that the first gym that you stepped into, Red Corner? Red Corner, yeah. It was okay. literally, it was the year they opened. Ah, okay. so How old are you at that point? 12 years old. Ah, okay. 12 years old, yeah. So I've literally been there at that same gym since I was 12. Wow. So the first year opened, they did a free class. Um, yeah, you still got a good connection with Red Corner Gym, right? Incredible. It, it was incredible right from the get-go because it came off the back of like being... I was, I was bullied a lot growing up. Yeah. Right. Grew up in an all-white Roman Catholic school. Um, prim- yeah, predominantly white secondary mm. school. Um, and I was always the outsider. You know, mm. I was getting a lot of trouble, especially outside in the street. I don't um, see you as that type of person that gets into, into trouble. You seem like a very straight shooter and uh, fo- follow the rules. Uh, I, I'm sure if you ask people that know me quite yeah? well, they'll say that. Uh, okay, that I can't, can't imagine that. That's the complete opposite, yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, especially as a kid growing up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I suppose I just wanted to, I wanted to stop the bullying. You know, mm-hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to be in a position whereby I wasn't anymore viewing myself as the victim. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much that I wanted to be the aggressor. I suppose I did. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't want to keep having to take shit from people yeah, yeah, and yeah. be in a position where I couldn't fight back. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. been punched and you know, I'd, been, I'd gotten into enough fights where I realized actually I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not crazy fights to that age, yeah, yeah, but in yeah. any case, boxing was always that thing that I knew, okay, right, if you learn this mm-hmm. logically, you're going to be able to stand a chance in the streets. Yeah. You know, and I suppose the kids in the streets back then, they gained respect from three things, right? If they sold drugs. Mm-hmm. Which I wasn't interested in. Mm-hmm. If they were thieves and you know had cash from that, mm. or they were the big man on the street, right? Yeah, so the yeah, guys yeah. who were able to fight, you know, mm. and the guys that used to try and bully me. Mm. So I suppose it was very much like a it was a defense mechanism, and also it, 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 for me it was an opportunity to not be the, not be in the same position that I saw myself at, mm-hmm. you know, compared to yeah. other people you know, in the streets and mm. in, in school. So, so what was that crowd that you? That you used to hang around with them. Is it is was that the reason that you it got wasn't caught so much, up into stuff? Or I wouldn't say it was so much the crowd I hang around with. I think you know just the, the when I was walking to and from school each day. Yeah, yeah. there'd always be kids from other schools that'd be around there. Yeah, and in the area that I grew up in, which is like an all white neighborhood. Okay, me and my brother were the only brown kids in the whole neighborhood. Okay, right. Yeah. So it was, it was a very much uh, you know working class. Mm white area yeah um it's not that all the kids are racing and it's not not even that they were intrinsically racist mm. themselves right but mm. back then you know at that sort of age I, th- I suppose the first the easiest thing for you to pick on someone is okay how are they different to you different, whether it be right? the brown kid whether it be yeah, you know yeah. the fat kid whether it be the ginger kid you know it's, mm. it's, 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 it's any differences you yeah know? so it's not necessarily that they you know they've grown up now being racist mm. it's just that back then that's just mm. just how it was okay no. Interesting. And but yeah, it, it was Red Corner, free summer class. And then I suppose off the back of that, um, I carried on, I stayed on. Um, in fact, Glenn, Glenn allowed me to train for free. Um, and then Warren, yeah. Warren took over as my PT. So did you box amateur then? Because I'm just trying to think back now. Obviously, we met each other at Red Corner Gym, yeah. right? In the amateur boxing class under Dennis Young. Um, at that point, were you fighting in the university championships? Do I remember? So it was before that. So we, I think we met when I was in secondary school still. Yeah, and I think I was boxing. about I was about fourteen. I'm not sure how old you are now, but at the time I was about fourteen. I think. 30, yeah, 14. So I can't remember what year it was when I met you, but I mean, I was mm. there from the age of twelve, literally. Yeah, yeah. So you know, all, all the classes, yeah, yeah, even yeah. when they had uh, Dennis over there, yeah. and then all, all the way through to university as well. Okay, so d- did you have any amateur yeah, contests? Yes, s- s- seven fights. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Seven fights. Was there ever any temptation to take it further? No, um, and the reason being, I think, from a very young age, I started to realize that to really make it in boxing. And mm. I suppose, you know, growing up as a kid, not having a lot, you know, from my parents, mm. not, I was very aware of the fact that money was a big part of, you mm. know, who someone was or mm. I suppose the things that I liked. And I, yeah. I, I could see the path in that. It would take you 15 years, you know, mm. to get to the point of, you know, putting everything into this career to then start mm. to realize the benefits of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, the, the competition of it wasn't so much of a passion as, you know, for me, it would have been, okay, I'm doing this because I want to make some money. Yeah. You know, from a young age, I was very motivated by business. And yeah, you had that entrepreneurial like that. mindset. Yeah, right? exactly. And I remember having the conversation with Glenn, actually, um, about this, you know, because I was working at the gym from the mm. age of 15. Mm. Um, and when I was 16, I was saying to him, you know, he's saying, oh, Ben, you reckon you can carry this on? I was like, no, I want to go to university. He was like, mm. oh, I never knew that. I just mm. always assumed you were going to be, you know, go into the mm. pro ranks. Yeah. I was like, I love this. You know? uh, so okay. I was training five days a week. Yeah, like, yeah, those, yeah. those guys now knew I was serious about it. I, I remember you, you were fairly decent and your style was always quite interesting as well. You were, you were very quick, 
but you had a lot of flair as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I got that from Warren, and obviously, yeah, which is what I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, come from Warren. Warren, Warren I mean, it's, it's a combination of that and just Prince Azim. You know, yeah. I just grew up. Was that your favorite him. boxer? Oh, was it growing up? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I've seen you've collabed a lot with uh, his son. Yeah, yeah, we have yeah. a great relationship, great friends with him. In fact, close friends. You know, yeah. they, they were around the flat about two weeks ago. Awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah it's, I know it's, you've got so, which we'll come on to talk about the um, the boxing gloves, which. I think people are itching to see, and I, I've seen that he's had some great words to, to say about yeah, them. I yeah, think he wants them. you to get them released ASAP, yeah, doesn't no, he? I think everyone does. Everyone does <laughs> but I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm basically there now. I'm okay. basically there. We'll, we'll come on to that in, in, in a little while. But, um, yeah, so just moving on then to um, to Box Source. Obviously, that, that's where your journey started in boxing. Obviously, you've got an entrepreneurial mindset from, from a young age. I know you had a couple of other kind of smaller businesses before Box Raw, but... Where did the the idea for Box Raw come from? Was that just a case of merging your passion for business and boxing together? And uh, what what are a couple of the failures you had to go through to to get to that point as well? Yeah, it, it came off the back of I was getting back into boxing, you know, because I stopped I mm. stopped boxing like you know with the intensity that I was and mm. you know just trying to compete because of arthritis, my wrist and knuckles. Oh, okay, um, so I toned it down a lot. Was you know. it? Do you think boxing contributes? Contribute to that. Know. I don't know. It's one of those you never know, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's hard to know. Like I've got my family have got uh, arthritis, mm -hmm. not at my age. Yeah, um, yeah. They got a, a later point, so it could be hereditary. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so I stopped for a while, and then it was actually coinciding with another business that I had at the time, um, mm. and that basically had failed that week. Um, mm. Five days after launch, we basically two, two cow founders gave up on it. You know, they okay. said, like, we're not, we're not doing anything further. Oh, okay. um, so I was quite down. At the time, I just happened to be training for a fight. Yeah. Because um, I wanted to get back into like, mm. like, back into competing. Um, I thought my arthritis had started to, you know, improve. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I was running down the street. And I, was just, I remember I was just wearing, I was wearing this Adidas tracksuit, right? But I always, mm. was also uh, remembering, like, all the times in the amateurs when we go for runs, mm. you know, and people would see us running in big groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just thinking, actually, I'd love to be wearing a brand whereby people would know Stands that I'm training out. for a fight. It's mm. not even just stands out. It's just like what it represents. Yeah, okay. I felt like everything that I'd learned from boxing up to that point, from back at Red, Red Corner days, you know, when I was a teenager to at university level, to then even after university, we working in, you know, white collar events, um, mm. doing the charity shows with Troy and the professional boxers yeah, at Red yeah. Corner. I just started to realize that actually boxing is so much bigger than just the, just that notion of two people getting in the ring trying to mm. fight each other, right? Yeah. What I thought it was about when I was 12 years old, mm. it's completely different to my viewpoint now, mm. you know? And I think, yeah, being on that journey, on that run in particular, you know, I was just really just thinking, shit, this is fucking cool as fuck, right? Mm. When I was at university, I had a boxing club mm. and um, I bought, I'd buy hoodies from uh, Coventry, mm. have, on, have on them printed, University of Bristol Amateur Boxing Club. Mm. And I would, you know, sell them at university. And I, you know, I think our term, our term fees are quite expensive. Mm. Um, I can't remember the exact amount, um, but people would come to pay the term fees. They'd buy the hoodies and then not come back to training. Mm -hmm. And then I'd see them around campus wearing these hoodies. I was really annoyed about it at the time. I'd be like, yo, I, I grabbed them. I literally grabbed this guy one day, you know, not an overly aggressive way. I was like, yo, <laughs> come on, come back to training, yeah. man. What are you playing at? Yeah. Um, and I was annoyed at the time, but then years later, I'm thinking actually boxing is one of those sports. If you do it, you're proud to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not proud it to is. do it, you should be proud to do it. Mm -hmm. And that was very much the motivation for starting Box Raw, right? In what the do you think that is that it's a sport to be proud of, do you think? What, what, do you, what do you think boxing does represent for a lot of people? I think it represents... Because I, I kind of feel like I know the feeling that you're talking about, but just trying yeah, to articulate it. I think, I think for me, it represents everything which, uh, you know, the core principles of boxing. If you take mm. them outside of boxing and apply them to life, mm. it leads to the most successful life possible, right? Yeah. In the sense of, you can't compare it to other sports in the sense of team sports, right? Mm. Because the reality is that life is a, it's, it's a lonely journey. You, yes, you can have you a great team mind. around you, your coach, you know, your cutman and, you know, all these people that contribute, you know, mentors, friends, staff, but ultimately it's you, you're, you're responsible for you. Yeah. That doesn't matter if you have your own business, you know, it's you, whether you work in, you know, petrol station, mm. you are responsible for you at the end of the day. You might have a yeah. great team and a great manager and family at home, but mm -hmm. you're responsible for your success. And I think yeah. this, the, the the discipline required to make it in the sport, you know, and the discipline that you learn from a young age within boxing. I remember um, Dennis would say to us, mm. right, he'd be like, oh yeah, boys, make sure you do a 5K run, you know, in the week. And I'd be like, 
<laughs> donut ain't gonna have a clue if I do this 5k run, yeah. right? And you go back to training, spa. I remember I was sparring with you, That's you mate, and your out. fitness was boom, man. I remember just thinking, I think we did do a few rounds, didn't yeah, we? we did. It was yeah, so yeah, long yeah, ago, but we, we must did. have done we a did. few. We did. Yeah. Your dad always used to watch us in the ring, and then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your dad treated me like a son as well in, oh, in those sessions, right. man. Yeah, to, to tell yeah. him that I, I do remember that you know, a lot of okay. the advice they do. He does remember you now as well. Like I mentioned, I was doing the podcast with you, he's like, yeah, yeah, I remember Ben, and he's got a shocking memory, he's 60 years old, so yeah. Yeah, no. no, I remember that specifically. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I suppose what you what you learn in boxing is so transferable to everyday mm. life. There's that component of it, right? The other component of it is just in terms of general fitness, right? Mm. There's no better way to keep fit than boxing, right? Yeah. Confidence, like yeah. in this day and age, it's so important to have you know more confidence, and especially mm. when you're walking through the streets. Which is the reason know? why I took it up in the first yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so many benefits of it, and it's not like. Mm oh, it's being negative saying that people need to learn how to fight. No, it's not. It's being prepared, you know, and with that comes confidence, you know, which again enhances. Um, and I think actually it, d it teaches you not to be violent in those situations, mm. right? Because yeah. ultimately, you know what you're capable of doing, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and you, you kind of just laugh at some people sometimes mm. in those situations. She's yeah. like, I know you're not going to do anything, but if you mm. do, I know I've got this, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that means I can handle that situation with mm. a lot more confidence. Yeah. Um, and then I think just the, the whole community aspect of the gym, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So growing up, right, you know, I couldn't really associate with like one particular group of friends, right? Mm. I was always typically the outsider. Mm. Whereas the gym, it, it never mattered where I came from. Mm. All that mattered was where I was headed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. A record took me in. Like I was suddenly surrounded by not even just because I was training there five days a week, right? I wasn't mm. going to every single. I was going to every single class for the amateurs, but mm. they went always on. So I trained on my own, mm. you know. So and in that time, going to the gym. I got to know everyone, you know, Big P, mm. Matty, Tony, yeah. you know, all these guys. They can that, you see know, the work you're putting in, right? It, I think you earn an element of respect. You, you earn the, the respect, back. but you also, mm. you get to mingle with people you'd never mm. get to mingle with, yeah, right? Yeah. And I, I go on holiday with these guys, right? Mm. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 33 now. These guys mm. are like, you know, 50, 60. Mm. Um, you know, it's such a wide variety of people, right? Yeah, which, yeah. which in any of a scenario, you, you wouldn't see. Mm. You, you wouldn't do, you wouldn't go to mm. football training mm. and randomly start to speak to these sorts yeah, of people, right? That's a good point. You, you wouldn't go to any of a sport where that becomes the norm. Mm. Um, I just think, yeah, if if people gave boxing a shot in, in, in the correct environment, yeah, um, especially from a young age, especially mm. from a young age, I think it would really, you know, we were speaking about it before, right? So I look at all the people from the amateur days, mm. with the exception of a few, but they're all got, they're going to do great things, right? Mm. And discipline's a core component of how they operate. Mm. Even yourself, right? Like yeah. how you approach your life, your, your lifestyle. Boxing's taught you that. Stays in your mind, right? Stays in your mind, e man. Even now, I think going forwards, like we were just talking about it off camera, I think the way that you apply yourself, like you said, <laughs> boxing is such a metaphor for life. It's different to football. When you get in that ring, it's you and you alone. Yeah. You've got no one in there to help you. And it's the same as life, right? Exactly. You, you are your your own responsibility in a sense where it's only you looking out for you and it's you against you as, as I say a lot of the time. So yeah, that's what I, I kind of use it as a bit of a metaphor for life in a way. And it, it can be a bit cheesy at times, but it works, definitely, right? Definitely. So just going back onto, uh, onto box tour then. So you have that business, which you said failed, um, well, which I think is important, right? We need to fail because it's, it's not really failure. It's, it's a step to your step along, along the journey, yeah. right? And then the next part of the journey for you was box raw. And how far after did box raw come from that initial failure that you had, you said? So it's probably about two years after that initial business, you know, yeah. ceasing, ceasing to operate. And, Where did the you know, idea come that? from? That, that's what I'm interested in. It, it, the, the, the idea what what business, were you doing when that idea popped yeah, into I was, your head? That's when I was running for that fight. I was training. You know, I was running okay. down the street. I was, so I was, I was, was running down, when you were literally running? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I was literally down the walls, go okay, yeah, And yeah. then days after... Um, I remember it's funny, right? I remember I was speaking to different friends, and I, they were asking, "Oh, how, how's Africa going?" The app, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, bearing in mind, I spent two years yeah. working on this app. Yeah. Two co-founders, one moved from New York, one moved from Paris mm. to come live with me at my dad's house. Oh, wow. Um, for about maybe nine months before the app launched, so I put yeah. a lot of time and energy into yeah, this. And yeah. Everyone knew about. Everyone in my network knew yeah. about this app. And I remember like the days after, the, you know, um, it's happened on a Friday, and probably like. By Sunday, Monday, you know, I'm just catching up with friends. They're like, mm. oh, you know, what's happening in Africa? I was like, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to do a boxing clothing brand. And they're like, what? Uh, and they're like, Ben, you're always trying something new. Because, you know, I tried my so hand. So you rebounded every... pretty quick then? Instantly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd already started thinking about it, you know? Yeah. Where did that ability to, to rebound so quickly come from? Because I think that's something that a lot of people, that I see a lot of people struggle with nowadays. If you're faced with a hurdle or a particular obstacle in life, some people really dwell on that and sit with it for a while. Whereas you straight away, okay, next thing, what can I do? Where does that come from? 
boxing, right? Yeah. You get taught that. You get taught <laughs> how, how, how many times True. you have a shit sparring session afterwards, you feel all sad, you know, yeah, yeah. and Glenn would come up to you, he's like, you yeah. know, you know you, this is this is life. Build that you, resilience. You, yeah, right? you, you get knocked yeah. down, and what yeah. do you do? I mean, look up. at this concept, right? You can't be in the ring, mm. get knocked down, and then think, let me throw the rest of the fight away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't give up, mm. right? You literally yeah. get taught to you go in, bounce back, bounce you, back. You, you go into your corner, yeah. Speak to your team, you know, yeah. Re Reevaluate, mm. and you go out for the next round. Yeah. That's life, man. Yeah, no, definitely. And I say this to a lot of kids because as important as it is to be in the gym in general, like as it is to weightlift or whatever, I think especially when you're at the age of, whether it be like say eight to, to 12 years old, I see a lot of kids going straight into the gym and starting, starting to lift the weights. And the one thing that I say, like to say to kids is obviously I don't push it on random kids, but I try and say to parents, try and get them into an amateur boxing club, the fundamentals and the discipline that it teaches you for life. Definitely. And how it prepares you for life, for Definitely. me, is second to none. Definitely. And I think sometimes what, maybe parents are wary of obviously it's a contact sport right but at the same time you're not actually it's not as brute and as violent as people no, think it is there's such a skill level. and an art not to at it. that exactly exactly amateur level. boxing yeah it's yeah. complete it's about point scoring yeah and exactly controlled aggression guys, right gloves yeah and of course, man. and and if anything i think when we were young like we were we were strong but we were able to do those fundamental exercises of um, sit ups, press ups, burpees. It's not about lifting the weights. And let's face it, when you're about 12 years old, no, you're not, you're not, you're not going to walk around like, like grit, a tank, man. are you? It was, it was about mental, it was about discipline, it was about yeah. grit, you know? Yeah, and I think exactly. that, that's a big problem, right? You look at today's, not I say today's society, but you look at today's society, right? It there's has so, changed, much, there's so much political correctness about like mm. how to, you know, learn discipline, right? So you yeah. need to be careful, you know, mm. you need to have balance. Like yeah. in the amateur club, like for that one and a half mm. hours that you're in that club, mm. No one gives a fuck about any of that. Like, yeah. you put the fucking work in, you know? No, 100%. And, and you can get that balance of, you know, what they teach you outside of, you know, outside of the gym, fine, mm. okay, learn to have that balance. But mm. in that one, one and a half hours, you know, three times a week, then put it in, you know? 100%. I think sometimes, and again, this is how I think times have changed. I think, and obviously I'm not a parent, but just speaking my opinion, I think when parents want to put their kids into a particular sport or exercise, they think their kid needs to enjoy it straight away. It needs to yeah. all be easy and they need to be good at it straight away. Like, no. Yeah. They need to experience, I think, struggle. Like, I experienced it. When I first walked into a boxing gym, I was ready to walk straight back out. And it was my dad who he literally said to me, he's like, no, you're, you're not leaving. Mm -hmm. He's like, do it for a while. Really? Have a okay, couple of fights, okay. like I said to you. And and it was a long process. Like, mm -hmm. I started when I was 10. I finished amateur boxing when I was, like, 18. But after I had a couple of fights, and obviously I got hooked on it for, for a while, but that advice really stayed with me. Like you said, it teaches you things, how yeah. to bounce back, how to be disciplined, how to get up early for your runs and things like that, which prepares you for life. It prepares you for the an inevitable com uncomfort you're going to face in life, right? Because it's going to happen. You're yeah. going to face uncomfort in life yeah, sooner or later. Definitely. And there's going to be a lot of uncomfort. Let's be honest. Like you faced a lot, but you're just really good at bouncing back from it because that's what it's taught you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. So, Going back to uh, to box raw again, at what point did you think, okay, I think I'm on to, I'm on to something here? Because it, it's been starting think... 2017 is when is when it launched, right? Yeah, I d so it's still think about it. It's still early I days, right? Yeah, I don't think I there was ever a point where I, where I was like, with the exception of like within the first year where maybe I had doubts like six months, nine months in, mm. you know, because compared to what I was making, I had a car sales business before. Yeah. Um, that was, making, that was you know, high turnover business, mm. right? Um, from a very, very young age, I went from doing that to then Box Raw, to then I remember one, at one moment just questioning, um, I remember I was, I was driving down this road, I was literally driving <laughs> okay. down this road mm. with Pardeep, yeah. um, who works in the brand, you know, I live with him, best friend. Mm. Um, and I remember saying to him, oh, I don't know about this, you know, we were at probably, 10,000 pounds in sales in six months, mm. you know? I remember saying to him, I, I, I don't know if you know, this is going anywhere. Mm. Um, you know, no one's really buying it. He's like, what do you mean? Like, boxers are wearing it. You've got people mm. on, you know, IFL TV wearing the brand, mm. you know, because they want to wear it. Mm. Um, the sales will come. That was the only, that was the only one time where I had a little bit of doubt. I suppose maybe I was just, you know, mm. talking out loud, venting. Um, but aside from that, from, even from the get go, past that point i'd always knew known mm. that i was on something mm. um it was never like i'm doing this half-heartedly yeah. even with the app even with the car sales business 
um, especially at the start of the car sales business, I was doing it with the intention that I'm going to make this the biggest thing possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to make I'm going to make some. I, I never did things by half measures, thinking that mm. this is going to be a side project. Like mm. anything I ever did, I, I put 100 percent into. When it came yeah. to the actual businesses that I started, yeah, you know, and I'm talking about side hustles mm. and you know things mm. that I ventured into. Okay, yeah, because I I know you've done a couple of other podcasts. Obviously, I had a little listen, and I think one of your initial goals with Box Four, obviously, it coincided with the Creed movies, right? Yes, and you wanted to get it into the Creed movies. And one of the things that I felt um, I was able to resonate with quite a bit is I think you spoke about, obviously, you didn't have any contacts. And I think at the start, obviously, it was just you and you alone. And you were kind of winging it as you went along. You didn't have the network. You didn't have the, the contacts that you needed uh, to get it to where you needed to be. But you had that sense of getting shit done when it when it needs to get done. And you found a way of making the contacts. I think you went on to the IMBD and you found out who the costume maker was um for creed and you contacted that person w which i loved because it's not something an idea which would pop into your head straight away but it would pop into your head if you're the type of person to say no i've got to figure out a way to to get this done and get myself in there which you found and you started to get a reply from the costume maker so then how did that then uh begin to take off how did you eventually then get it into into creed yeah so it was, it's not really just relationship building to start mm. with right we started chatting and after six months i remember news came out that they were going to release the new um or start working on the new creed movie this is creed mm. 2 at the time um and yeah i reached out to her i said look you know any chance you can get us into creed she was like, oh sorry i'm not working on this movie yeah. um i was like fuck it's not all the time, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're trying to work this angle and you're not working on the movie yeah, yeah, yeah. um and i left it for about a week or so i went back to her i remember leaving it thinking okay right i can't be cheeky enough now to say how do you reckon i can get in there yeah, yeah um yeah. i left it for a week and you know just trying to think how the fuck am I going to do this now? This is time yeah. ticking against me. So I just went back to her. I said, look, you know, is there any recommendations you can make of how I can mm. get in the movie? Mm. She said, look, you know, um, not in contact with the costume designer, but I am in contact with the um, product sourcing company or okay. uh, who work with, you know, big films like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they might charge you, um, but I'll make the instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, she made so the instruction. All, right? yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she, she made an instruction and, yeah, became very powerful with his family out in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, with Cat and Adam Stone. And, became yeah friends i suppose and, and what was their role uh, so the, they, they they ran a product sourcing company okay out there in LA. they work with the biggest movies out there you know, oh, the biggest okay. ones in fact they've they've awesome. introduced we're doing one, one right now with Liam neeson in it okay um yeah so the, the relationship's still there you know yeah yeah since, yeah since then um and they said look we can't you don't need to pay us um michael mm. jordan sponsored by nike but we can try and get get on some of the extras mm. and i was like that's great you know so mm. they sent a the whole um, plan of what they wanted mm. um shipped that and then didn't hear anything and then about two weeks later I remember it was a Thursday night. This is about a year into Box Raw, maybe just a little bit less. Um, and an American number's on the phone mm -hmm. calling. And we're not doing a lot of business in America at this mm -hmm. point. We haven't even opened a US store. Um, and I pick it up. And uh, yeah, it's the, the, one of the directors or someone on set with Michael B. Jordan saying, oh, I'm on set. Michael B. Jordan uh, loves the oh, wow. tracksuits that one of these extras is wearing, but they don't fit him. Do you reckon you could send us four sets by Saturday in two colors? I remember, I was, you know, at the time I was gassed up inside, like, so I was like, fuck it, you know, I thought mm. you were sponsored by Nike and I was going to be yeah, wearing yeah. it. Um, and I played it cool. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Must have been a bit of a semi-surreal moment, though. It, w it, it was, it was. Yeah. But I think, you, you know what? And it, a proud moment as well, right? Yeah. Because it, it's, it's about a milestone in your, in your journey. It's not, it's not the end of your journey by any means, but you know it, your work is paying off. Yeah, I th there was definitely that part of it. There was yeah. definitely that part of it. Um... But you know, played it cool. Said, "Look, we'll send it. We're not. Uh, we won't charge you." Got it right. Yeah. Um, and we sent them, and then it was a few months later. A trailer came out. We were in Liberia doing a mission trip with our mm. charity, Boxing Is Love. Yeah. Um, and watching it on my phone, not expecting anything, and then boom, two box full of tracksuits come up. You know, he's wearing them. Wow. And then I was just like, "Fuck, this is yeah, sick." Yeah. Um, and yeah, movie came out. Hardly any people even knew Boxwell was in there because we, our branding back then was so subtle. You know, it was color yeah. on color printing. Yeah. Um, but it, it was never about, you know, necessarily everyone knowing it's there. It was more of a personal goal for me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, goal complete. And then obviously, you know, relationship was still there for the third film. Um, found again different ways in, going to different people in his network. Mm. Had the opportunity to speak to Michael B. Jordan for like mm. half an hour. We ended up spending an hour and a half on the phone. Um, awesome. fully vibed about what we're trying to do with box draw yeah, um, yeah. the technology and the gloves and the boots mm. um, they were positioning the Creed character as like you know the elite now in boxing you yeah, know yeah, yeah. equipment's like a Mayweather mm. um, and he needed the best equipment and clothing so yeah. where else do you go to obviously he came to us so yeah um, I, I think it's amazing now that the high profile athletes that, that are wearing box draw I can't think of a 
of a boxer who hasn't, especially who's at the top of their game, that haven't wore box raw. And I know on uh, on social media, I've seen you traveling the world with Lomachenko, Usyk, Terence Crawford. I think Terence Crawford was not that long ago. But how did those interactions come about with the with, with those figures? Was it off the back of um, of Creed? Was Creed the real platform? To- nah, Creed, Creed, Creed two didn't do uh, m- much for us. Creed, yeah. uh, you know, in terms of like you know awareness. As I mm-hmm. said, it was, okay. unless you unless you knew the tracksuit that yeah. you know we would happen to be selling, and we're looking out for that color on color tape. So it didn't quite you open went- up to the boxing market. Yeah, especially. it didn't. And okay. the thing is, the boxing market is very different to the movie market, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. the um, especially nowadays. Um, but the, the, the boxing, I suppose the elite boxers we've been working with from the get-go, really. Yeah. You know, we we started, in fact, when we launched the brand, mm. um, in the build-up to it, you know, six months before, mm. eight months before, I started to do these things, uh, these Snapchat takeovers. So I'd get a boxer to take over our Snapchat, and um, he'd do like a day in the life. And this yeah. wasn't really a thing back then. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd get them to post on their Instagram yeah. these QR codes that says, mm. you know, follow Box Raw TV on Snapchat <laughs> from a day in the life. Mm-hmm. And no one was really, stories weren't a thing at that mm. point on Instagram yeah. know, um, back then. So yeah, they'd be posting these things. I mean, I think the first one we got was Andre Berto. We had Deontay Wilder. This is before mm. we launched, right? Oh, wow. And Andre Berto okay. was world champion. Yeah, Deontay yeah, Wilder yeah. was a world champion. Big, big names. Um, big names. Then we started to get the credibility. And then we, I'd literally just go box to boxer saying, look, you know, this boxer's taken over. Yeah. Back then, Instagram wasn't big for boxing. Mm. Um, it's not what it is now. You know, yeah. where now you it's highly unlikely someone's going to read a DM, you know, if they've got, you know, a large following. Yeah. And they're going to take any, you know, it's just because there's so much information going through mm. Instagram uh, these days. But back then, it was much easier to get in contact with these fighters. Like even R- Ryan Garcia took over, you know, this yeah. is before we launched, this would have been 2016. Yeah. He, he took over our Snapchat, you know, oh, wow. he had, I don't know, probably 15,000 followers. You know, mm. I, I got pally with him. Mm. A friend over in, um, that I met in LA actually, mm. who's helping us with some stuff, a girl called Jalen. She now works for Top Rank actually. Oh. She was sort of coming up in boxing, um, and yeah, I remember she was like, this is a guy called Ryan Garcia, you really need to look out for him. Mm. Um, and I built a relationship with him. And still to this day, you know, we still speak. Wow. Um, so I kind of grew up with the growth of Instagram um, mm. and the growth of boxing, I think, you know, which really made it a lot easier. Yeah. And when it came to, you know, broken the deals with like these bigger boxers, just the same way you handle Creed, right? You, you find a way. Mm. You know, it's literally, it's, it's, it's my background, my phone. You know, find a way. You know, yeah. it's just like, I'll whenever there's a problem, like, okay, how are we going to figure this out? You know, th- there's always a way. And I bet they probably appreciate the fact that you're not just a businessman, but you also appreciate the boxer side of things, right? You understand what it is that they're looking for, whether it be from a boxing glove, from a boxing boot, the apparel, that you understand what it is that they want. I think want. that's what was key for them, actually. Yeah. You know, when we com- when they compare us to other brands, it's like... You're not just any old businessman who's yeah, pushing you know, something out there. There's one thing, the quality. Mm. The quality is better than, you know, your traditional mm. Nike and so on. There's the the story behind it. You know, each product's mm. named after a boxer. You know, yeah. the boxers love that at the start. You know, they'd open the packages and they'd get a, um, you know, pull out their... The, the Whitaker, was it the Fernal Whitaker? Like, yeah, but the, 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 each yeah. product comes with a card, like a trump card. We hand yeah. draw it in the office. You yeah. know, it's got a writer of the boxer, like um, stats of the boxer. Yeah. You know, it was those small details which yeah. actually the boxer market, like, hey, this guy, you know, he's really trying to do something. Mm. And I think even t- down to how we spoke on social, mm. we were speaking in ways which only boxers would really understand. You know, we were speaking their language. Mm. And it was very clear from the get-go we weren't trying to do what, you know, the Everlasts, mm. Lonsdales of this world were doing, you know, which mm. was, you know, very much just focused on the end result of yeah. boxing, which is a fight night. Yeah. We talked about the journey. We talked about the emotion mm. because I knew what the journey was like. I knew what mm. the emotion was like. You know, I spent time around amateurs, professionals, yeah. you know, before, you know, from Red Corner days, you know, yeah, the, the yeah, whole yeah. pro team, every single profile, I'd be there mm. with them. You know, I'd be in the changing rooms with them. Yeah. Um, so I spent a lot of time growing up, you know, in the, actually in that environment. Um, and I think they... Which is key. Yeah, it's key. It's key. Mm. So when you're having conversations with them, I, I can speak the same language as them. You know, I'm not mm. just a, you know, a guy from a private school in a suit, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, trying to do business. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to do something with this sport. And I think that was yeah, recognized yeah. early on. Um, and yeah, Lomachenko, I remember reaching out to his manager, um, initially asking him to do a deal. I think I offered... Did you know. go with him to, to one of his fights abroad? Quite a few of them, Did I yeah. see you were in his corner Three as fights, well? Like yeah, yeah. Practically in his corner yeah, yeah. ringside. Yeah, Which yeah. fight was that that you went Quite to? Quite a few of them. Pedraza. Yeah. Um, Linares. Oh, wow. Rigondo. Um, so they in Vegas, I think they were. They right? were in New York. I think all three Madison were in Square Garden. They were, they were, I think they were all in Madison Square Garden. Okay. I think I can't remember. What was that like to watch Lomachenko up close? He must have been... Mate, it was, you know what? I think 
the time that I've spent amongst these boxers, you yeah. know, in my journey of boxer mm -hmm. has definitely contributed to who I am today. Yeah. I think just seeing these people perform at that level. Well, you're around winners and elite athletes. Yeah. Right? That yeah. mindset. Exactly. Is different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. like, I kind of like try. Has it rubbed off on you? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%, man. And I, I learned something mm. different from each from each fighter. Mm. You know, they're, they're all completely different in camp, you know, and I won't, yeah. I won't talk too much about how they're different, um, just out of respect for, you know, mm. these sensitive situations yeah, yeah. in camp. Mm. Um, but everything with how to deal with stress, about ways to switch off, mm. um, mindset within camp. Like even, you know, Loma is so, like, laser focused. He notices everything, man. Yeah. The guy is so uh, detail-orientated. Mm. Um, and just small things, you know, just yeah. random conversations and how he looks at products to how competitive he is. Yeah. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, they're all so competitive. Yeah. Um, even down to Crawford, man. I remember last, last year. You I was were training house. with him as well, right? And yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to ask. Like, did you have to go through your own boxing camp in England before you flew over to train with him? Like, did you... Did you even manage to keep up with him? Mate, it's, it, no. I, I can't even, I can't pretend that I was even like on the same level as him, mm. you know, being able to compete, you know, but I, I did my best, you know, yeah. and, I, and I wasn't, you know. What were the kind of things that you, that you did together, training work? Because I saw you were doing like hill sprints and yeah, this is a great example, right? Like those yeah. hill sprints that I did with him, like I've never seen sprints done in that way. And yeah. it's the same format that I've now taken to Sprint Club. Um, yeah, yeah uh, I'll talk about that a little, yeah, in a little while. It's, but yeah. um, but it, 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 it was great, man. It was, you know, a lot of running, bag work, and obviously didn't do any sparring or anything, or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. I did pad work with his coach. Um, but it's just great to watch them. You know, yeah. he's, again, he's so competitive. But yeah, I was in his house, obviously, last year. We were mm. playing ping pong. Yeah. Um, so, he, he, he will beat you and, and laugh at you as he's beating you aggressively. Yeah. Like, have that! You yeah, know, it's yeah, just yeah. So aggressive. But like, again, I've taken that out, you know, just that, that aggressive competitiveness. Like, okay. It's, um, it definitely rubs off on you. Definitely rubs off on you. Um, and even, you know, down to you being in camp with you, you know, just seeing how jokey he is, yeah. um, outside of, you know, j just, just training. Is he like that in everyday life? Are you sick at the top of jokey type of, uh, yeah, man. character? Man, yeah. the guys, I've got so many video, hilarious videos, man, yeah. of uh, times that I've spent with him in New York, yeah. in Ukraine, in Russia. Um, this is before, you know, yeah. the wars and so on. Um, yeah, I've just got, I've got great memories with these boxes. You know, I've got great memories with these I was going to save this to the end, this question, but I'm just going to quickly ask you now, Usako Fury, who do you think? You see your fury. But take I any think, bias out of it that you've. Uh, yeah, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think if Fury comes with his A game, yeah, um, I think the bigger boxer wins yeah. that fight. Um, I think the Fury has the IQ, which mm. be, it would depend on whether or mm. not he puts everything into this. Oh, okay. Um, I think Usyk will make it a very tricky fight. Yeah, but I think Fury's got the pedigree and the height and the reach advantage um, to box a very smart fight. That's interesting because I've always said to people that I feel like. Usyk has the better pedigree, especially from the amateur career. He, he has got the better pe pedigree, but it comes to a point, I think, in heavyweight boxing, whereby if you've got two boxers that are actual boxers, yeah. then actually there is a thing to be said about weight advantage, yeah, height advantage, that's what I think advantage. is going to come into play. Um, I so think that's going to be the deciding factor. as long factor. as Fury goes in this, yeah. without the, you know, not the same mentality he went yeah. into the Nganu fight, yeah. um, logic to me would dictate, you know, the boxer yeah. in me you know, yeah. would, would tell me that Fury should win. Yeah. I, I think that is what will happen. I can see Fury edging it, but I do think if it was just down to size and Usyk was, say, a couple of inches taller and a, bit, a, a little bit oh, wider, 100%. like a natural heavyweight, 100%. I feel like he would just outskill him like he's done to of absolutely... Because wasn't his amateur record, like, 350 wins yeah, and two yeah. losses, some, some of which is just yeah. ridiculous yeah. in the amateurs, right? Yeah. yeah. But, um, no, yeah, that sounds like you're living the the life of a, of a true boxing fan, right? I do, man. I mean, I, I try and treat my life like a training camp, right? Yeah. You know, I say it's like a training camp. Monday to Friday, especially, you know, it's like yeah. a training camp, you know, with with the discipline that I try and, you know, build into my daily routine, you know, albeit times I wake up, the amount of training that I do, my diet. So routine um, and structure's key, routine, right? exactly, exactly. And that's a, yeah. it's a big thing you realise, actually, when you're in camp with these guys. And even just having been in camps myself yeah. before, right? Tell um, me a little bit about that, then, with you, because I know you like to prioritise your your own mental health and your own physical health. Um, I've sort of seen that you've started these sprint clubs as well, which I've seen you've got big groups of people joining you in the morning, like 5.30, 6 o'clock, to do these sprint works. I love doing sprints. For me, there's nothing Mate, there's, better there's one and tomorrow, long, long burning than, than doing sprints. There's one tomorrow at 8 a.m. Yeah. at Memorial Park. Is, is that your invite to yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I might have to now. It's on camera. Yeah, absolutely I'm not getting out to. of it now. Don't touch shit. Don't touch <laughs> shit. Don't, don't be that guy. 8 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. Meet me in the office. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. No way out now. I'm, yeah. It's on camera, mate. Yeah. So uh, there we go. 100%. But um, yeah, so where does that come from? And how important is that to you with the uh, 
with with the with the health and fitness and keeping yourself mentally in the right space. Yeah, I think it's it's important to me because I, I I've done both right. I've been through periods of life where I haven't trained and worked. I've been through periods of life mm. where I have trained and worked. Yeah. Um, and I choose the have trained. Yeah. And worked. You know, every single time because mm. I'm just so much more productive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, training. The, I train twice a day. You know, mm. I train cardio. I do cardio in the morning, so it could mm. be swimming boxing or running mm-hmm. um and at lunchtime i just do some hit weights you know yeah, yeah, 20 yeah. minutes mm-hmm. just to make sure i'm using my joints and yeah, yeah, you know, lifting um and that I, I love that formula because first thing in the morning doing the cardio fasted mm-hmm. come into the office i, I have to do the whatever the cardio is mm-hmm. i'll then jump into the spa sauna steam cold shower mm-hmm. i'm into the office i feel mm-hmm. alive you know yeah, i feel yeah. energized as fuck mm-hmm. um and then come lunch you know i don't i don't eat lunch either so i don't have breakfast or lunch mm-hmm. um i go to the gym um, now, if I don't go to the gym, mm. I'll find it a lot harder to not eat. You know, mm. I don't typically like eating lunch because I, I, I get very lethargic after eating. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just get that tired spell in the afternoon, which which, which I don't like. And I find yeah. myself, my focus is like 10-10 mm. um, when I don't eat. But naturally, it can be harder because you're so much rumbling. But I find if I train, it breaks up that cycle. Mm. And I come back after... Um, lunch which is 20 minutes and i feel alive again but it feels mm, like a okay. morning afternoon almost yeah 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 um it isn't and it's you know it's almost like a lunch break for me you know yeah, I have yeah. music on i don't look at my phone for work mm. um just 20 minutes in out um and the office is what two minutes away from the uh yeah from the gym yeah you must have but to be very time efficient with your with your workouts right? very time efficient yeah but yeah. I, I enjoy it yeah enjoy it, man like, I'm, i genuinely enjoy it like um, I, w- I wouldn't have any way. Yeah. Where, where did that fasting come from with you as well? Because it's something that, that I've started to incorporate as well. And like I said, not for any reason kind of aesthetically, but mentally it, it, it keeps me sharp. So yeah. is that, like, where did, it, where did you first hear about fasting? Yeah, and, what, and why did, do you think it worked for you? It's, it's a, you know, I've actually got a really great story for this yeah. and, and proof that it works. Yeah. Um, so about two and a half years ago, I went to, I was training at... Mm. Um, I think it was Bel- yeah, it's Belgian ABC. Um, Belgian. Yeah, yeah, R- yeah. R- Richard, Todd, uh, Richard Todd used to run it. Um, yeah, and I was sparring there. Um, and then that night, I don't, don't, didn't think there was that much of an issue. Mm. Um, I left, you know, I was, I was sparring one of the Midlands champs that was there. Mm. Um, obviously, wasn't as fit as I used to be. Mm. Thought it'd be fine. You know, I'm mm. taking silly shots. Mm. It was fine. Split my lip open. Yeah. Not a big problem. But then six months later, um, I was... Uh, so a bit more context for like the last year and a half i'd be getting these random like attacks of uh vertigo so i get okay. suddenly get very very dizzy you okay. know and the room would just spin yeah um and kept going to the hospital we're doing different checks mm-hmm. on me like i'm deaf in my right ear actually from, from boxing as well like 95 oh, really? percent deaf yeah okay. um so it really affect my balance that'd yeah. be very hard to do things mm-hmm. um and it got to the point whereby i um crashed um not so much a big accident, but I went into the curb when I was driving because mm. it happened, the vertigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck this, I need, I need to figure out what it is. Mm. So anyway, I went to the hospital and they were trying every type of check. It was getting worse mm. and worse. And they were like, right, can you just get an eye check for us? Mm. Um, we, just, we just want to see if there's anything to do with the eyes. Mm. Um, did an eye check and they could see that my retina was detached, oh. um, which obviously yeah. came from that sparring. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, I had to have surgery on it. And anyway, they did, did the surgery. Um, I remember I was out of training for like, they said no training for six months. Yeah. Um, and then I started to train maybe after two months, like two yeah. months of no training. That's, I suppose that's also a contribution to why I yeah. take my health and fitness so seriously. Because yeah. I, I, I got myself to a point where I was just giving myself the excuse that, oh, you've had an operation, you can't train. Mm. You can just eat junk food, you know? At the weekends, you don't need to worry about doing exercise. You physically couldn't for like the first mm. two months because any time you walk, they basically take the eyeball out they get a metal buckle, they sew it back around the eyeball yeah. and make it round. So the eyeball basically went from being round to being like a rugby ball. Oh, okay. um, even now, yeah, if I do that, I can feel the metal buckle. Have you got any vision in that eye? So no. it's, it's, it's not as good as it was before. Yeah. Um, so but the point was, right, that the operation wasn't a success. Yeah. So they said to me, and it could have been because I was training still. Mm. Um, but yeah, they said to me, you need to have another operation. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck that. I'm not doing another operation. It's, it's a horrible operation. Mm. You know, the recovery process is... You have to sleep upright. Mm. You can't sleep back like that. Mm. You know, you, you're, my eye was completely red. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Even still to this day now, like if I have a drink, this eye gets very lazy. Mm. Um, and if, if I don't get a lot of sleep, I slept. I don't I hardly slept at all last night. This morning yeah. I woke up, I was like, you know, I'm looking cockeyed, and one eye is like slightly, yeah, slightly, slightly yeah, yeah. closed. Um, mm. So it has affected me because obviously there's strain yeah. naturally at the back of the eye. Mm. Um, but I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do another operation. Like I can't do it. And there was a risk of one in one thousand people can go blind from it. Mm. So I'm like, Fuck yeah, that. No, that's so I started to, I suppose to glam. 
mm-hmm. um, at the gym. Yeah, yeah. You know, our boxing coach. And he, he said, Ben, you should look at the benefits of fasting. People can yeah. be in healing like cancer and things like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, surely not. And I started to do more research into it. So many people shit on it and I find it annoying because ridiculous. don't knock it till you tried it, right? Yeah. So research, you know, about fasting and understanding that actually if the body can preserve energy um, from not um, using its digest- mm. digestive system, which takes yeah. a lot of energy in the body, mm. um, it can use that energy to heal. Yeah. Um, so I did a five-day water fast, mm. no eating, yeah. um, just salt, electrolytes, and, and water. And I went back to the hospital. Um, so she said, look, Ben, you need to have an operation. Mm. I was like, this was this is only like, this is probably 12 minutes after the operation, by the way, because mm. they weren't allowed to do the operation yeah. while it was still healing. Um, I was like, give me one week, doctor. You know, I'll come back. <laughs> um, did the one-week fast. Uh, or five-day fast, and then, in fact, I've got photos of it, mate. Well, let me just show you, just for your own context. Um, and the rest in her had started to heal. Wow. And she, she was like, how has this happened? Do you mind if I bring the other consultants in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. At this? And they were like, how has this happened? Because mm. the, the rest in will not heal itself. Yeah. They're, it's, they're categorically, they say, you need to have an operation to heal this. Mm. Um, and they're like, can you do some studies on you? I was like, no, hell no, don't, you're not touching me. I'm mm. telling you it's fasting. Mm. I understand this basic concept, but... It's not what they're taught, though, right? No, it's not even about what they're taught, right? And it's not, it's not so their fault. So they can't fault. contemplate there's and an understand agenda, it. Bro. I, just, I don't want to start being consp- a conspiracist about I, this I, I think stuff, I'm going to be on the same page as you but are. The, the, there's, but there's no, there's no value in them promoting things like there fasting. Isn't. Because yeah. well, they can't make money from things like that, right? They're exactly. never going to promote that. They get taught to treat your symptoms, but they don't actually tell you anything about general health. Exactly. That responsibility is on ourselves, right? Exactly. To look after our general health. They're there to obviously, whether it gets to the point of surgery or needing medication, treating the symptoms. Yeah. But in terms of before you get to the point of having those symptoms, that's our responsibility, right? Yeah. That's yeah. not where they're going to help you. Yeah. That's where yeah. we have to help but ourselves. Even just to do with healing, man, it just, mm. you know, it, again, it did wonders for me. Like, so that was my retina. If you look. That's before, that's the, that's, if you imagine that's like so super, that's, super zoomed in. That's the, that's the detachment, detachment yeah. exactly. That's a week later. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that is like, so I was like completely yeah. like. So she, but I'll tell you the mistake I made. I'll tell you the mistake I made. So she, yeah. I, mean, I did five days fasting with no yeah. training. Yeah. Now the key thing, if you're trying to fast for healing, mm. then you shouldn't be training because mm. it, after that point, you know, I kept coming back um, and it was starting to get slightly better. And she was like, okay, come back in like six months time mm. and carry on with the fasting. It's clearly working. Mm. Now, I was getting to the point then of doing more and more fasting. Mm. Um, every two weeks, I'd do it. Mm. Um, and it went from five days to then to three days. But then I was I was starting to train myself to train twice a day while also fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the six months, well, when the six months came around, I was then in a position whereby I'm training every single tw- twice a day while I've been fasting. But when I went back to the hospital and they did the scans, it hadn't healed, mm. right? So I had to then take another six months then mm-hmm. to understand that actually if I want to actually heal the retina, I can't be training while I'm fasting. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where that fasting thing, you know, mm. came from. Just mm-hmm. more so by chance realizing that by fasting and not eating during the day, I was be- becoming more focused. Yeah, yeah, so it yeah. wasn't like I was doing it because I wanted to lose weight. I was doing it because I was trying to he- heal an eye injury. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, fa- doing straight water fasting for multiple days, it's not what mm. I do now. Now mm. I just do one meal a day in the evening, you know, or a okay. you know, big massive meal in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very different, but my motivation mm. back then was just, I did not want to have an eye operation. Mm. You know, that was, and yeah, yeah, yeah. people in the office said, Ben, you're crazy. How have you still mm. not eaten? And yeah. this is, this is what, two years ago and fasting wasn't really a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So back then it was completely alien. Now it's, yeah. you know, there's a lot more people Hatching publicly it. doing it. I think you know. people are trying it and seeing that it's actually working. Obviously, um, I know one guy who's got pretty big off promoting it is Eddie Abu. I don't know if you've uh, no, seen no, much no. of his stuff um, and again he's on the, on social media but yeah he's blew up in the space of about oh the old guy yeah 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah 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 in the space yeah. of about six months oh, I, I didn't want to say black guy <laughs> <laughs> in the space of six months he's got like 3.5 um, mil followers and yeah, a lot of people because he's quite out there in the way that he speaks he swears a lot and, yeah. and things like that and people think oh that's the only reason he's got so many followers on no not really because then i could just go on social media swear a lot and i wouldn't get any follow the yeah. reason is people are trying what he's saying especially when it comes to things like fasting and eating whole foods and it's working that's why i say to a lot of people don't knock it until you've tried it because th- there's such an overload of information out there right someone will be shitting on what he says Definitely. someone will be shitting on what we've said about fasting and that no is bullshit there'll be different reasons for wanting to fast for me it's about internal health and longevity it's not about trying i'm not trying to bulk i'm not trying to put on muscle mass i think that's what people need to understand 
do not knock it until yeah. you've tried it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're living proof that, that it works. Yeah, exactly. In a pretty miraculous way with yeah, your eye yeah. as well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I think that, that that's really where a lot of that discipline comes from in terms of like diet during the week. Yeah. Um, and I try and have a fairly like carb free diet yeah. during the week, like not a lot of sugar, um, high protein, a lot of eggs. Yeah. Um, probably not as much veg, veg as I should be having. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, listen, there's days like Wednesdays typically I'll train three times. Tr- three times a day mm-hmm. um, and I'll boxing in the morning with, with the staff I'll train mm-hmm. at lunchtime and then by the evening session for boxing mm-hmm. um, I found that when I was fasting um, for the whole day I didn't have any explosive you know energy mm-hmm. um, it's a very different type of you know requirement the boxing has yeah. you know yeah, on be the body. careful how you use the fasting and when you use it right because yeah. especially like you said if you're training or if you're a boxer and you're in camp you're not going to be yeah of course yeah, yeah, it's, not, it's, yeah. Not, it's not right for some people I think for me it's more so about the focus that I have at work yeah. you know um, and just understanding that actually our human body was never designed you know it, it never evolved thinking it was gonna be eating three times a day right we were hunters and gatherers yeah you know by nature and yeah, it'd yeah. be five days in between each meal you know mm-hmm. three days between each meal yeah um so i think yeah the, the human body is a lot more capable you know of things yeah than, no, than people uh, believe yeah. and, I th- and i really believe that you know use it or lose it yeah, um I'm, I'm at the age now where some of my friends who aren't you know is sort of health and wellness conscious you know i'm seeing the results it's having on them you know mm. whether it be Things are being told is wrong with them, or catches up with you. Yeah, even way, even yeah. the way how they walk up the stairs. I'm like, yo, bruv, how are you this unfit, man? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to be at 50 years old, you know, 60. Years, and g- listen, Glenn is a living proof of this. Yeah, yeah. 60 years old. I went went Still went went, went to my bear last year for the 60th, and mate, they got incredible shape. So yeah. healthy, healthy in the mind. Mm-hmm. Um, it's keeps like up with everyone in the circuits in the morning. Like, yeah. okay, he's still, he's still, still at 16. Mate, at five o'clock every morning, yeah. that motherfucker opens the gym, right? Yeah. Set, sets on the circuit. He'll mess with Ben doing circuits tomorrow at um, 5.15. Yeah. I'm like, fuck's sake, okay. <laughs> you know? And I'll do yeah. the circuit. I mean, it's the most ridiculous circuits. But, yeah. you know, he's, he's to be able to manage to maintain that throughout his whole life. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he's where I learned my discipline from. Like, yeah. I learned everything, mm. you know, to do with discipline from him. Make it a know? part of your life. Yeah. Right? He, mate, even still today. So I remember mm. last year in Marbella, right? You know, we're at the airport and he'll be like, What's in that, Ben? You know, just it has this effect on, effect on you whereby you're just like, yeah, I know, fuck's sake, why did that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, yeah, it's um, it's because you don't want to cheat yourself either mentally, right? No, it's not like cheating myself, man. I don't yeah. want to cheat him. Like he's looking at, <laughs> mate, Glenn's like the priest, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that that's fair enough. But um, yeah, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about, I don't think you've mentioned it previously, but. And again, I, I don't know if I'm completely wrong in saying this. I just remember seeing this. I know whether it was an article or something many years ago when uh, Box Raw first launched. Did you have a bit of a, I don't know how much you can talk about this, a bit of a legal dispute with the name of Box Raw and another similar brand in G-Star Raw. Yeah, yeah, we Which you did. won, I, I believe. So just yeah. tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I forgot about that, actually. I haven't spoken about that in ages. I can't, um, I can't believe that I've actually even, that stayed in my head all these years. Yeah. I can't remember where I saw so it, but. This actually happened before we launched. Yeah. So when we were, we launched in like 2017, january right? And I think around January 2016, we probably had applied for the trademark maybe in November 2015, mm. Box Raw. Mm. Um, and then how it works when you apply for a trademark context is that you, you can publish a trademark, but then for a period of, I think, three or six months, anyone can out there it. can dispute the trademark, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. typically you'll have these big companies that will have retainers or legal firms who are mm-hmm. constantly looking out for anything mm-hmm. with similar names. Oh, okay, um, so that's how they came names. So I got a letter, and I, I remember, <laughs> I remember um, at the start, um, receiving this letter and not being sure if it was real or yeah. if a friend had sent it because yeah. friends would say, you know, at the, at the start, Box Raw did, wasn't Box Raw what it is right now, right? It's yeah. just a random name for yeah. these people. And they were like, oh, isn't it a bit like G-Star Raw? Mm. I was like, no, no. So I wasn't sure if it was a friend to start with. And then, um, yeah, got, got it checked out um, and it's legit, you know, mm. and it speaks to, to lawyers and they're all like, okay, just change the name. You haven't launched a brand yet. Mm. I was like, well, now I've already got this clothing being made. And they're like, Ben, you only, you know, also, were you in the midst of production? Yeah, yeah, in the midst of okay. production, yeah, yeah. And I, I bought the domain. Yeah. Um, I got the Instagram handle. We're starting to build a community mm. out there. And I, I started to love the name. You know, I, mm. I actually didn't like the name to start with. Yeah. Um, it was actually the name of a white collar um, or charity event company that we used to do. We used to do events to raise money for like Zoe's oh, place. Oh, is that where Box Raw came from? Yeah, so it was okay. the name of that. Um, we, we did an event in the town centre with yeah. um, Troy and Joe. Um, yeah, it was like a sparring and like pad event just in the... Yeah, random. So at that point when G Star Royal came in, was there a, even a little temptation you know to change it? 
No, because I was like, who are these motherfuckers that are going to tell me, you know... That made you more and you know, insistent I, 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 I not wanting like, to change no, it, No, right? so I was like, it's illogical, right? Yeah. They have a trademark for the word raw. Mm. This is box raw, one That's word. A, yeah, not gonna, like, I wouldn't have thought there was any... Nothing kind of, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's nothing like that. You can't say there's any there's any likelihood of confusion between box raw and G-Star raw, right? Yeah. So I was like, fuck these guys. You know, and they're yeah. always like, you sure? Why are you incurring legal fees? Yeah. Um... And they said they've got deep pockets. They're gonna put a lot of money into yeah, this yeah, yeah. because they're very lit- litigious. Yeah. There's no company out there mm. with the name, with a name of you know a clothing brand with raw inside of it. Mm. They litigate everyone, uh, right? Okay. And that's the reason why. So how did you fight that then? Did, did you need a bit bit of money behind you then to? Uh, it was uh, I, how, I, how far did it, it go? It wasn't like uh, in the early stage, not a lot, right? After so we didn't actually at the early stage, no. But yes, then it started to rack up. Yeah. Um, and if our first year. I was fortunate in the sense of I had the car sales business, mm. um, maybe, maybe, maybe two years even. The car sales business was making money, and that, that would put the money into box raw. Okay. So that yep. was funding us, you know. So we had fairly, you know, decent, you mm. know, cash reserves in, in, in the first mm. few years. But it got to a point whereby we just couldn't afford to anymore, you mm. know. And then I think two years in, obviously we closed the car sales business, thinking we're self-sustaining, and then we weren't able to, you know, carry on with the legal fees. Is, so I bet that was G Star Raw's aim, right? To oh, of course, yeah, 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 of course, of course. To play the long game. Um, and I remember, yeah, we we went for the tribunal. You know, we had our local, you know, solicitor. They mm. came with all their big, <laughs> big lawyers, and uh, mm. we won in the UK courts. Yeah, you know, but uh, it, there was a time actually where I, I was starting to get very worried. It was it was a lot of stress. Yeah, it, it's funny talking about it now because it's like, yeah. it, it's re- I'm reliving memories of like actually was way more stressful than I'm probably making out, but I suppose because yeah. we've overcome that now, yeah. I don't really think of it as like they did me dirty or it was stressful. If that mm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, but at the time, yeah, we, we even changed people who have been customers of Box Raw since the early years will notice that in this um, just after the first year, we started because things started to get a bit more serious. Mm. Um, we changed everything to BXRW, so on mm. all the neck labels. Mm. Um, so obviously neck labels and things you have mm. to produce in bulk. Yeah. Um, because we're like, okay, if we lose, then actually we are going to have to change the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have to pay all back all the legal fees. Mm. And accountants and you know finance people are saying, you're going to go bankrupt because you have to mm. pay the legal fees. You won't be able to cover that. Mm. You're out of business. So I was like, yeah. fuck. Mm. But I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it still, you know. We could have changed the name back then, but I was like, let's try this. Who, who, what fucking sort of brand owner boxing that's learned from boxing will I've been if I had back down just because yeah, they're yeah, bigger yeah. than us and they said their opinion feels like this infringes on the trademark. It was yeah, opinion. Yeah. It was yeah, opinion. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. legally true. If, if it was just raw, fine. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, people can Google it. You can Google it online. Uh, so that's like the principle behind it, right? Like like you said, box raw is a brand. What would it say about your brand what if you were us, to man? just let it... Fuck Let that, it man. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you can go, you can literally Google Box Raw G Star and you'll see the government papers. They're all, yeah. they're all published online. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. You can read it. You can read, and you can read the Box Raw for G Star. Ah, um, okay. And yeah, we won. Ah, no, we good won. stuff. And yeah, I, I still to this day can't remember where I first looked. And it must have been when I was probably about, yeah, in my early 20s that, that it might I have saw been on it. Ba- I remember I put, a, I put a Facebook status on right, back in the day when I used it to might, It might have been. Yeah, because yeah. I haven't talked about it a lot. Yeah, yeah, which I saw. I was, I was looking at your podcast. And I was like, oh, this hasn't been mentioned. I haven't, I haven't th- talked about it a lot, yeah. yeah. But it, again, so that must have given you a, a little bit of publicity as well, the fact that... No, it wasn't because we, 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 we didn't want not, to raise any publicity Not that that was it. your aim from it. No, but it, it, it we, we didn't get any publicity from it. Because yeah. again, the lawyers like, at the time, because we, we won the UK courts, and then there was the next case of the uh, EU courts. Yeah. They were like, we don't want to aggravate them. They've mm. got deeper pockets than you. So I was following the yeah, lawyer's yeah. advice to a degree. Yeah. Um, and that was the reason why. You know, In, in my head, I was like, oh, let's do some campaigns to try and take out the big guy. Um, and mm. you know, a journal done it. And actually, you know, what am I going to gain from yeah, this? Yeah, you know, yeah. What am I going to gain from this? Let's just focus on building the business, get these lawyers to do their jobs. Um, okay. Yeah. What will be will be. So uh, I know with Box Raw, you you want to kind of create a bit a bit of a legacy with Box Raw, right? And you even said after you, like in kind of like fifty hundred years time after you passed, you want there to be that legacy of of Box Raw. So how how far do do you want to take Box Raw? Is it just going to be all about the boxing is there any temptation to cross over we're seeing crossover in the actual boxing world with mma are you considering kind of doing the same thing or is it just going to be at the moment is that focus on just boxing or are you open-minded to expanding that as as the years go on yeah i think i think the sport will always specialize in will be boxing right yeah we i suppose we we think of our market as like a triangle right we've got compete at the very top which are the guys who compete Mm. um that's the market i know things about right in terms of innovation product development, you know, boots, clubs, head guys, mm. all the stuff we're working on. 
I know I can put everything into that and I can mm. know I know for a fact I can do better than anyone mm. else out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes to other sports specializing in those sorts of specific things like, mm. you know, MMA, things like that, I don't have as much of a foundation in mm. that to be able to put the same level of credibility and, you know, what happens in box or boxing products mm. into that. So right now, I think... Back, if you had have asked me this probably four or five years ago, I said, yeah, we're going to go after all combat sports. But what about from an apparel side of things? Because that's where you probably <clears throat> don't need as much. Exactly. But yeah, in, in terms of where I want to branch out past the compete section, then you get into train, right? Mm. So in terms of training. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm. I feel like we could be, you know, a solid competitor and be up there with the big boys. You know? Who would you say are your main competitors at the minute? It depends what you're looking at, right? Are you looking mm. at just apparel? Are you looking yeah, at actually, just yeah, it's a good point. Let, let's we, say we're looking at boxing equipment. You got like you got your rival out there. You you've got your other kind of big equipment, um, uh, boxing brands. But then, yeah, when you come to apparel, you've got P- Gymshark who are now like, for example, crossing over into see and Garnu where the uh, yeah, and everyone's doing it. You know, yeah. it's, I think right now I'm just trying to focus on boxing. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, obviously, the goal is to become you know what, mm. what Jordan is to basketball, boxer is yeah. to boxing. You know, synonymous with a sport whereby kids in the street can wear the brand, but not necessarily be a basketball player, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with box raw, you know, but mm. it's more about the lifestyle that it represents. And yeah. so for me to be able to do that, I need to really focus on what the brand stands for in the first instance, yeah, right? Yeah. I need to embed in the consumer's mind, actually, this, <clears throat> this brand, mm. you know, is centered around discipline, you know, mm. it's centered around community, um, it's centered around mindfulness, you know, the mm. core tenets of the sport of boxing. Yeah. Um, I think from there, then we can start, you know, Going yeah, through those levels. Because I would have said maybe about 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, would boxing alone get you to where you need to be? I know yourself, you'd have been hellbent. You somehow would have found a way to make it work. But I just didn't feel like there were enough eyes on boxing. There weren't enough people getting involved in boxing um, to really make a go of it, so to speak. I know you probably still would have found a way to make, make a go of it. But I think over the last like 10 to 15 years, it's grown massively boxing massively. and I think something like you look at say for example Misfits Misfits yeah. boxing you got Jake Paul and people like that now now getting they've brought a whole new audience in right which if anything I know people shit on the Misfits boxing and to be fair it's a shocking standard of yeah. boxing but in a way is it good for the sport of boxing because they brought in a whole new audience right you now see people uh, you see young kids wanting to get in, get into the 100%. gym. And... I've spoken to so many gym owners, right, that have said, you know, there's been an influx of children getting into the sport. I've so I think, it, yeah. I think it's great for the overall sport of boxing. Mm. Um, me personally, I don't really have a lot of interest in watching it. I, mm. One thing that kind of gets to me is just the lack of preparation that they yeah. put in and then watching the actual mm. outcome of them fighting. I'm like, come on, man, yeah. be a bit more serious in camp. Yeah, yeah That yeah. I'm not a big fan of. But again, mm. who, who am I to say anything? Like, I'm mm. not, I can't take money off someone's plate. By saying yeah, yeah, yeah. you sh- you don't deserve to box. Like if they they've, yeah. they've built a market, yeah. and naturally, even if I give an example, right? If some of my favorite actors got into boxing, you know, or rappers got into boxing, mm. um, and they said they were going to fight another one, mm. my favorite ones, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd watch it. Yeah, if it's yeah. a misfit box because I'm interested in that person fighting, yeah. regardless of whether or not they put the time into the camp. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I just want to see who wins. Yeah, like, boxing's that sport. Like, the, what's the one thing that can guarantee attention on a playground in school? Yeah. It's a fight. The one thing that everyone gathers around. It's two gladiators getting in there, no way out exactly. other than exactly. a winner. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're intrinsically trained, you know. Yeah. It's embedded in us just to be attracted towards combat sports, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially when you know the individual. Mm. Especially when and you know the individual. there's a story behind it. So I can see why it's blown mm. up, right? Everyone mm. wants to see people fight, yeah. right? Um, so there is a market for it. Yeah. And I think the byproduct of that is it's been great for grassroots boxing. There's more yeah. kids now trying to take it up. Um, Would you say it's good for boxer or? As a, as a brand? Um, I don't think... Because we don't work with a lot of those fighters. I don't mm. think it's necessarily impacted us. Maybe. But just in terms of the, the eyes it's brought towards Definitely. Oh, boxing, listen, yeah. listen. Our, our vision yeah. is to be the reason why the world got into boxing. Mm. Right? So anything that brings more people into the sport is... Yeah, you're on board with. Yeah, yeah, I'm on board with it. I'm mm. on board with it. Again, it doesn't mean I necessarily like to watch yeah. it. Uh, I have watched Misfits fights, you know, because I've just been interested in... Okay, I do know Which a little bit about Because there's one that I watched and then I vowed after that I'm not going to watch another one. But I, I'll say the, the one that was it was the... Um, Dylan Dennis versus Logan Paul and KSI versus Tommy Fury. I, they're, 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 I think they're the two that I've watched. Oh, was it? Yeah, because it was on the same bill. And oh, okay, that would be why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These I've watched them both. They're yeah, on the yeah, same yeah. bill. I do remember that, yeah. Oh, but should... you know what? It's a great build-up. The, the build-up was amazing, which is why I got sucked into it, yeah. into watching it. And uh, yeah, absolutely did not live up to expectation. No, the, the, it wasn't boxing. It genuinely was not yeah. boxing. The yeah. KSI, Tommy Fury, they were just holding each other for about five, six rounds, however long it was. And then Dylan Dennis and uh, Logan Paul, I think, uh, w- 
multiple occasions Dylan Dennis was trying to take him to the ground. Yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It was ridiculous. It's a bit disrespectful to, to the sport of boxing, to yeah. be honest. But like but you said, it's hard. You, you have to say, it's, it's like, what do you expect, right? Yeah. What do you expect? They're not actual professionals. Mm. I know they get the professional license, but when you when you conduct yourself like that, yeah. it's testament to the fact you haven't grown up in an amateur club, right? Exactly. You know, there's something to be said about the difference between a professional boxer and the, you know, the morals that's instilled with them, yeah. you know, how they operate within the ring. Like, yeah. you'd never be allowed to do that. Never, you'd never be able to do The credibility you get at an amateur boxing yeah. club. Like, yeah. I, I always say this, anybody who wants to start boxing, if you're a young kid, go to an amateur boxing club. It's going to be unfamiliar surroundings. It's going to be a bit scary at first, but what you learn there, you will not learn anywhere yeah, else, 100%, right? 100%, 100%, 100%. And you, you, you can see that, but listen, it, it's good for boxing. Yeah. I think it's interesting, right? You look... Mm. Um, you look at the evolution of sports over time, right? Mm. About, I remember over the last few years, not last few years, maybe five years ago, six years ago, um, I was reading memoirs of some staff members from um, mm. Nike. Yeah. There's one, I can't, I can't remember the name of the book, you know, or who wrote it. Um, but he was talking about the idea of people running back then, 60 years ago, mm. 65 years ago, no one did it, right? It was completely unheard of. Mm. The only people that did it were these track athletes, mm -hmm. Olympic champions, and what happened was they Nike came along, right, and they popularized the sport by partnering with these track champions. Mm. They brought it into the mainstream. Mm. You look at yoga, mm. right, 25 years ago. The idea of doing yoga was just practiced by yogis in India, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened was Lululemon came along and they sort of, they attached themselves to this niche community in Vancouver mm. who were doing classes and created gear for them. Mm. Naturally, as, as, as the activity in yoga started to evolve, mm. they were able to be part of that and also bring it to the masses, right? Yeah. You look at Gymshark, what they've done for the gym. 15 years ago, the idea of going to the gym to just to lift weights, was no one did it, man. Mm. When, when I was growing up, you know, I was one of very few people that was lifting weights. Was, I was only doing mm. it because I was, it was in the boxing gym, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, Gymshark came along, they reduced the barriers to entry, especially for women, you know, about lifting, and they brought it to the mainstream. Right. Mm. They've been, you know, they've been fundamental yeah. to the uplift of people going to the gym and lifting. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. same way Nike did with running, yeah. you know? Brands are responsible, in my, in my view, for bringing, taking sports to the mass market, right? Mm. So me, where I'm at with Box Raw, I really believe it's my purpose, right, to try and take boxing to the world. Yeah. I think everything that I do, by way of selling products, by, you know, the equipment, the clothing, other things are initiatives like our charity. The you Boxing know. is Love Foundation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like working on some tech as well. It's yeah. like, it's all centered around that. You know, it's a byproduct of the overall vision. Right? Yeah. I just want to attach myself to all these things and mm. think, what can I do by way of, with the charity, with the yeah. tech, with the gloves, with the mm. content we produce on social media, mm. with how we talk about the sport, you know, the thank you cards we give. How can we be responsible for one, which comes back to the very first question you said to me, right? Mm. How can we be responsible for being something that people are proud of, you know, mm. when it comes to boxing? Where they look at it and be like, I'm proud to be part of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, of what is boxing? Mm. Um, and then two, um, how can I do it in a way which actually looks fucking cool, mm. you know? I just feel like that's, that, that's, that's my purpose, yeah. you know? Um, and yeah, it's, it's it's something that I really really feel like I'm you know I'm, there's a long we've got a long long way to go yeah. before we get to that point. Yeah. But we're making our you know we, we've started it the right way. Right? Yeah. So so you've had a quite a few business ventures now. By the sounds of it, is this the one now? Oh, 100 percent. This is hundred percent the one now, right? Hundred uh, percent. I don't think it can't not be right. Yeah, yeah. You, you're not going to want to dabble but, in anything but, else. But, but, but being honest with you, yeah. you know, up until the point of the business failing for the previous yeah. one, that was the only thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up until the point of the car sales business, you know. Yeah. More or less, it, that that was the only thing, mm. you know, and, it, and the other ventures I've gone into. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like I can say with confidence, this is the only thing, you know. Yeah. You know, I get I get opportunities all the time with friends or mm. companies, you know, venture into this. But this stuff is your love. This is your baby now, right? I need to put focus into this. Yeah. You know, I learned that in the early days, you know, especially when you start out, you know, when you're very naive and mm. you start to see success in certain areas, you think mm. you're fucking unstoppable, right? You're gonna go after everything. Mm. Um. You go after all these things. And, yeah. You know, MMA was one of them. I remember mm. probably three years in. MMA athletes, they, they loved our stuff. We were mm. working with some of the biggest stars out there, you know, from Nganu, Cody Garbrandt. Um, I can't remember oh, half their names. It's, like, listen, mm. I, I don't follow a lot of MMA. Um, but all, all the big guys um, were wearing it. You know, we started yeah. to look at equipment for mm. them and it just took away the development of the glove. Yeah. Um, you know, the time away from that, it's like, let's just focus on this. You know, we've got so much more we need to achieve mm. in boxing. Like, we've only just launched bags, you know, yeah. rings. We still haven't even launched gloves and boots because mm. we're just taking our time to do it correctly. Like, we yeah. got our first deliveries for bags, you know, maybe two weeks ago in New York, Church Street Gym. So, um, yeah. And the feedback's just been insane. It's just, we had such a delay in, well, we had two years, three years into trying to develop these bags. Mm. 
And then they ordered them last September. They only just received them and the, everything that could have gone Would wrong. Would you say you're a perfectionist in the way that you like to produce products? Because I know with these boxing gloves, boxing boots, they've been uh, in the pipeline for a while now, right? The boxing gloves, I've seen that you've had hundreds, I don't know whether it's thousands, thousands. of different thousands. samples and uh, iterations of how you want to create that finished product with the boxing glove. And I'm itching to see it. Like I said, I saw a clip of... Uh, Prince Nassim, Sir and Adam, wearing the glove saying, just release it, it feels awesome. And um, I, I guess the main question for me is, what is it that you're trying to achieve with a boxing glove? Is it protection to the hands, which is a huge thing? You see people, big fighters like Mayweather, Amir Khan, crippled with hand in, in, injuries. Um, is it a case of being able to do more damage is it comfort what is it what are you trying to achieve with the perfect boxing glove it's, 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 it's all of the above is it's it all yeah. of the above right the i want you to create a glove that will first of all allow you to punch harder right mm. and features in there which actually allow you to throw a punch harder yeah okay, simple as that next one i want you to be able to create a glove where you can punch faster okay yeah. And that comes out. Like, I can't talk about the features too much now. <laughs> with, with the fast, yeah. it's just it's aerodynamics. It's simply yeah. just aerodynamics. There's right? a lot of science behind it, right? So, maybe we partner with Silverstone. We yeah. use their Winternal. We use their computational fluid dynamics uh, uh, testing okay. team um, to literally take our pattern, compare it against all the competitors. You know, yeah, yeah, winning yeah. rival uh, fly. We looked at them mm. and we're like, okay, this is the baseline. Mm. Right, how do we improve on this baseline? Yeah. Now? yeah. Um, Was there a temptation just to release it with your? Because you could create something on par with rival and what I'm, I'm sure you could do that oh, now with your brand and it could do well of course but, but what's you it don't say about us you don't want it to just do well you want to create something innovative different that hasn't been done before which you like to do quite a lot i think with not just boxing gloves but with other things as well right yeah but th th there's no fun in that like yeah so many times you know especially in the last couple of years where we're like okay if the gloves are ready now we'll do this or okay well, let's not let's not do these mm. gloves because actually we can launch this and it will be a bestseller mm. and it's the same as what everyone else is doing but that's, a, that's the whole reason I'm here, right? I fully recognize that when I came into the industry, it was just full of, full of a load of dinosaurs. There was little to no innovation being done on the glove mm. um, and just generally in the boxing market, mm. you know, whether it be the content people were putting out, the way they spoke to customers, mm. the apparel they they made for um, for boxers, mm. the designs, everything was just so stuck in the stone ages, mm. man. Um, yeah, I'm just not interested in that. You know, yeah. I, you can't create a legacy brand that's going to, be around after I'm gone if I just do the same shit as everyone yeah, else. Yeah, no. um, and I admire, actually, I admire that. Yeah. yeah, and it's just because it's a long time ago. Absolutely, but is is there a danger then? You said it's gonna help you punch harder. Is is there a danger? And again, I'm not sure what route you want to take these boxing gloves down. Whether it's for the casual gym goer or look, look, I know professionals will use. Is it just for in the gym or do you want to get it licensed? We've, we've got for four. Yeah, fight, we're 100 percent we, to we, fight in the. Uh, we're not starting with the, we're not starting with the, with the fight gloves uh, yeah. just because there's a lot more innovation that has to go into them to yeah. get to that point. Training is what I've been focusing on. Yeah, now, it's not a big difference between the training and the fight glove, but there, there's different features you need in the training mm -hmm. glove, right? Mm. How you a glove that you want to serve you for five years in the yeah. gym, training every single day if, if you want to, yeah. it's a very different glove than you'd make for an actual fight night, yeah. right? Where it's 12 rounds, okay? okay? Um, just in terms of the materials that you yeah. use, um, the damage you want it to I bet there's to restrictions person. though, it, of if course you did want to take it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course there'll be restrictions. And naturally, yeah. you know, there'll be some people in the market because it's just how boxing mm. is that see something new and be like, that's not gonna work. But mm. we've been testing all these champions mm -hmm. today. Yeah, we've been getting the feedback from how, them. How has that been going through those thousands of... Uh, Hard, how, man. How close are you to uh, to launch now? We're, we're like 98% there. How long have you been at 98%? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, a long time, a long time. But it's... A, like listen, I said, I, I, I just see you as being that perfectionist. Yeah, the it's like, no, it needs the, to be You know what it is? It's just, I suppose the longer that I've... The longer that I've been spending on these gloves, the more yeah. the more the pressure builds up. So I can't yeah, be, yeah. you know, even at three years in, it's like after one year, I thought, okay, the gloves are going to launch at the end of this year. Yeah. So we started to say, coming at the end of the year. But now it's got this far, you're like, you might as well get it to I, state of perfection, I, I, right? I, I'm at you, the final hurdle now. Yeah, I'm at the final hurdle now. Um, I mean, even today, you know, the reason why I was a little bit late, we we're finalizing the packaging mm -hmm. experience for that. You okay. know, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. not starting that obviously until I'm at the final stages yeah, now. Yeah. So. Um, we're, we're almost there. There's a few, the, the pattern's fine. You know, I've got no changes yeah. to the pattern. I'm just trying to, there's one final tweak I want to make to the foams. Yeah. Um, and especially how they operate for a 16 ounce glove versus the 12 ounce glove. So it's, again, I won't bore you with the whole details okay, of it, yeah, but yeah. Um, I'm at final stages now. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And is it the same kind of concept with the, um, with the boxing boots as well, which I know um, 
are in the pipeline? Is it a case of you're still? Yeah, so the, I'm actually flying out to China next week to meet with the footwear supplier. So okay. they're they're basically there. I've got one one mechanism I'm, I'm trying to like improve to uh, give you greater downforce into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, anyone knows that boxing, you know, it's very. It's, you need to try and be as close to the ground as possible mm. so you can leverage off the, off of the ground and drive mm. forward. Yeah. Um, so we've got a completely proprietary sole, um, mm. which no one's done before. Um, there's technology on the inside which actually allows you to punch harder again, you know, and it provides very specific um, cushioning, you know, and firmness to areas of the feet where you need it for a boxer because, mm. you know, you're literally on the inside of your, inside mm. ball of your, you know, front yeah. part of your foot. Yeah. There's another sport which really requires you to pivot in that motion. Mm. Um, so yeah, specific four boxes. It needs to help with that explosive movement, right? Exactly, in, yeah. in the way that you you throw a punch, because a lot of people think it's just about the hands, but mm-hmm. it's not. It's about the hips. It's about the feet. Exactly. The way you ro- you pivot off the sole of your feet. Yeah, yeah. And what's the first rule they teach you in an amateur boxing club? Don't ever drop your your back exactly. heel, right? Exactly. I think a big part of it, you know, in, in terms of these delays with the products, is like, what timeline am I on? Mm. Right. I'm not. It's not like I'm trying to do an exit. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm trying to get to a certain revenue milestone mm-hmm. by this. I mean, listen, we do. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got I've got milestones and so on that I, I want to get to. But the reality is, if I really want to create what I'm trying to create, I need to make sure this is the best possible. I can't mm. do it then look back and be like, "Fuck, yeah, didn't fucking take the time to do it." Now, there is something to be said about you know, we'll never actually get to a point of being it being perfect, right? Mm. There'll always be the next thing that we can try to improve. Yeah. I think just yeah, I'm I'm at ninety eight percent. Yeah, <laughs> I am at ninety eight percent. I oh, know it's interesting. So, obviously, you got the boxing gloves, you got the boxing boots, you got the bags. Obviously, you're starting to kind of branch out there with with, with all the different kind of types of equipment. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that's in the pipeline other than the uh, the gloves and the uh, yeah? And we've the boxing got some boots? new we've got some new concepts launching as well, which yeah. is like hand protection devices okay. um, to help with boxes to especially save time and mm. uh, mitigate the time it takes to wrap yeah. hands. Yeah. Um, lo- you know, full suite of coaches' equipment, pad, different types of pads. Yeah. Um, well, more types of bags coming out. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, our power line is really you know we're taking it to the next level, which is why yeah. you know I'm going to China next week. And obviously, you spoke about obviously the arthritis that you have in your hands. So with these gloves, is it gonna? It started with safety. It didn't start yeah. with wanting to create a okay. glove. Yeah. yeah. So again, it, it took the love out. Of it's boxing such, for me. it's such a big thing for a yeah. lot of boxers, yeah. right? Where their careers are hampered by hand injuries. Yeah. Like so many like Olympians and even pro boxers who get to the latter phase of their career. And they're fighting with half a hand, basically. Exactly. Like, it, it takes a little bit of boxing, man. Does, there's, yeah, yeah. there's nothing worse than hitting the bags and just getting in your flow or hitting pads and being like, fuck, that hurt my knuckle. Or... From all the science that you've seen with boxing gloves, why is it that so many boxers get damaged hands? Is it that there's not enough padding? There's, or... there's loads of reason, right? It's not so much not enough padding. It's not like you add more padding and then suddenly yeah. you're going to stop mm. boxing, right? Obviously, you have parameters of which, you know, how thick a foam can mm. be. It's to do with the density compositions, mm-hmm. um, the actual molecules that are in there, you know, is, is it nitrile base? Is it latex? Is it a blend? Mm. Um, sponges, the, you know, different types of layering. How compact the hand is. <laughs> That's a lot of the position. <laughs> the position yeah, the hand yeah, is yeah. in, you know, position of the thumb. Yeah. Um, the way you're able to open mm. and close a, um, a glove. The security it has around the wrist mm. to stop the wrist from moving. Yeah. Um, there's so many. Mm. There's so much to it, which I just know none of these other guys have a fucking clue about. Yeah. Um, you know, I back myself as knowing more about boxing glove than anyone else out there. When it, 100%. Let, let me ask you something, man. It just popped into my head. Do you remember the fight? Um, and it was the first one. They had two fights, Miguel Cotto and Margarita. Yes. Um, so there was a lot of controversy. Yeah, it was back of that fight. His, his wraps, wasn't it? It was something the, to do with his hand wraps. He put and plaster, plaster pa- in apparently, there. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he used plaster. Do you think that is what he, what he did? Because I don't think he ever admitted it, did he? Yeah, I think I, I can't even remember. I remember those ages ago. He yeah, did a lot of he, damage to Cotto he, in that first he got fight. Caught. He, I'm sure he got caught with it, didn't he? I'm pretty sure they took a picture, and I think the blood that the um, what was the hand wraps that they were saying were yeah. clay had the same blood stain in the second fight on, on before he even got into the ring that it had in the first fight. Interesting. So I think they did do him because of that, but obviously he denied it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite a bit afterwards, but yeah. I think he must have uh, must have been something going on it's a dodgy dirty. there, right? Boxing's a dirty sport, man. Yeah, it can be a dirty sport. This is one of the things that I've asked a couple of the of the boxers, especially the professional boxers that have come on. Another thing that's quite big in boxing, just get your thoughts on it as well, is the use of uh, performance enhancing drugs. We're seeing boxers getting caught for it, denying it. Is it a level playing field now? Because sometimes I feel like there's there's always going to be new and improved methods of escaping these um, these drugs tests, yeah. and it's a dangerous sport and. Is it really a level playing field? And not saying even the people who, who have been caught, obviously the likes of Conor Ben, not not even saying that he has. M- maybe it was contamination or whatever. But 
can you really be sure that it's a it's a clean sport? Right? It's, it's a it's a it's big, not, a big I mean, issue. I mean, boxing, the, the, I the reality is, it's not a clean sport. Mm. It's not a clean sport. You know, there's things that the you know governing bodies and boxers try and put in place mm. to try and make it a clean sport, mm. but it will never be fully eradicated. You know, yeah. in the same way, in you know, corruption in any endeavor. You know, yeah. whether it be in finance, you know, in law, you know, in football, mm. you know, it's it's never going to be completely eradicated. Yeah. Um, which is the sad thing. You know, that's just it's just life. Um, yeah. like, it's not saying I agree with it. Mm. Um, but I guess if you're a boxer, it's not the hesitant minds that you can go into the sport yeah, with, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Case of what, what are you going to do? Yourself. You know? Exactly. It's one of those things. But no, it's been good to hear, uh, obviously, about yourself and Boxer. Uh, but just before you close off, I want to get your opinion on a couple of fights, one of which I think we touched on with the Usyk Fury fight. So, and this one's going to piss you right off as well. The first one, I thought, let me just get it out of the way because um, I think it's a joke of a fight. I don't even think it will be a fight. Jake Paul, Tyson Fury, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, Mike Tyson. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. That doesn't even. There's nothing. Make... There's nothing Jake Paul can do to win that night, right? Regardless of the outcome of that night, he doesn't win, right? You see, I, I, I think with Mike Tyson being at 58 years of age, I think you can look as good as you want on the pads. I think Jake Paul is the only one out of all of them. That probably dedicates himself in the semi. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I just think it's a ridiculous fight. He's put everything into it. It's just yeah. a ridiculous fight. Like he, yeah. he's past the point of needing to fight. Apparently you know. now the rules have come out where sixteen ounce gloves exhibition. Oh really? Right. But apparently that's being denied. But it's... I don't know. I, I I don't keep up with it. To be honest. I mean, listen. All right. Let's let's move on from yeah, that one. Then I'm not yeah. going to make you pick a winner yeah. on that one. Um, this is one that I'm really looking forward to. Jack Ta- Jack Taylor, Josh Taylor, and Catterall. Catterall. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I, I thought he, he definitely won that first fight, didn't he? I, I, I think he won that first I fight. I thought that, that was he, he don't massively think, controversial. I don't, I don't even think it's not. Uh, I think he won that first fight. He won that first fight. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he won yeah. that first Even fight. Even I was about to say, yeah, I think he had. No, he, he, he won that. Yeah, I was, I I was trying what, to remember, yeah. I was watching it with my dad, and we were like, and I just had a feeling they were going to give it to Taylor. To be honest, I, I just had a feeling something dodgy was going to go on. Mate, but. I, think, I think the whole... Judging system in boxing is so fucking flawed. Yeah, I think it's so massively. flawed. Like you, you look at scoring in any other sport, yeah. it's so easy to identify: has the person won? Has the loss? Has the team won? Has it have they lost? I, I think that's a big problem within boxing, right? Is that? Yeah. And we're doing a lot of stuff to address this at the moment, actually. Yeah. In other areas of the business, okay. um, um, just to do with how boxing is, you know, scored. Like, you know, I can't delve too much into this, and you, you'll find out. Okay, probably that's in, interesting. In a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, but watch the story. Um, yeah, it's gonna. I like they, that. that you're things tru- need to change. You're truly looking to help the sport in any way that you can. Yeah, right? whether it be officiating, judging, or yeah, or yeah. Whatever. And it's, I think everything will have to be turned on its head for it to change. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a big problem. You know, the mass market watch boxing, but they're all typically just looking to watch a knockout. Now, when a knockout has a fifty percent chance of happening, and if you haven't grown up in the sport of boxing, you can't really enjoy a full, f- mm. full, you know, mm. fight because one, you don't really know what you're looking for. You know, mm. and there's such ambiguous scoring methods. Like mm. you look at how they. How they judge your fight, right? One is accuracy, which is fairly yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, you've got um aggression and you've got ring general. Like judges have different preferences though, right? Exactly. It's, it's like you can't th- there's such ambiguous terms yeah, which yeah, yeah. you can't even quantify if you tried. Yeah. Right. Um and I think that's a big problem. And I, I get why it's so stuck in the ways because people who really know boxing know that it's an art and they'll see yeah. things happen, but you know, at its core, it should yeah. be based off certain principles. Mm. You know, and I'm not saying I have all the answers and that's a good point. What are the principles the, what they should say is what are the principles of boxing? It for me, it should be a case of, say, if you had somebody on the front foot, somebody on the back foot, I would prefer the aggressor because they're trying to make something of the yeah. fight. They're trying to make something happen. Yeah. They're not just trying to make it a stink fest or a ball fest. You know what I mean? There, yeah. there needs to be certain principles in place which they can measure the contest against, right? 100%. 100%. It's, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a fundamentally a big problem, right? You've got people who are judging fights who actually don't know anything about boxing. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying they don't know anything about boxing, but they mm. haven't typically being a boxer, right, mm. to actually understand. And yeah. I think the reason why it's so stuck in their ways is because of this legacy, which is boxing, right? Boxing mm. is an art. Yeah. You know, it's very hard for to quantify the reason why certain things make sense. You know, this you can't quantify why styles make fights. You can mm. talk ambiguously about something due to your intuition, right? You can say, mm. oh, this person, my view of this fight, fighter's style is this. But you might have a different view depending mm. on how you watched it. Yeah. You know? So it's quite... It's fragmented in that regard, mm. you know, and I'm not saying that's a it's necessarily a bad thing. I just yeah. think there's nothing available right now to try and help people understand actually what boxing is, and you know, it's things that we're working yeah, on. That's true, and I guess it's a like it's a case of helping the judges to make that clear and obvious decision. Are they equipped with what they need? Do they have 
the facilities they need to make informed decisions of who has won the fight. Uh, is it purely just based on you know the naked eye from their yeah, kind of skewed angle? So yeah, there's a lot to it. But mm-hmm. let's go on to the next one. Um, and again, these are potential fighters now. So Adam Azeen, Dalton Smith, which has been talked about. I know he's going to potentially be fighting Harlem Eubank I think, uh, next. But yeah, I th- you know what? I think it's a great fight. I think it's very hard. It's a tough fight um, to call. Dalton Smith, incredible pedigree. Mm. Um, grown up around what the whole the Edwards brothers. Mm. Um, again, great pedigree. Mm. Um, he was Team GB as well, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was. Um, yeah. Adam Azim, superstar right from the get go. Yeah. Have we seen him step up yet to that mm. same level? Mm. I don't know. So for me, um, I th- you know I think Adam Azim is a, is a huge mm. talent, mm. but Dalton Smith is a is a problem. You mm. know, he's a problem for anyone. So I think this will. I don't want to cheap out, cheapen out on this question. Um, the answer to this, mm. but. This fight will then help us understand a lot about those two fighters. Yeah. Right now, who wins? And in three years' time, who wins? <sighs> three years isn't even fair because it's like, how do boxers develop? How do they like, develop? Yeah. How yeah, many? Like, so, like, I've seen so many boxers that had yeah. a lot of talent, you know, at a young age, show potential, yeah, but then falling off. They haven't taken mm. it seriously. Yeah, no, you know? And I've been around, point. again, I've been around these boxers. I, I, I think this is where I, I disagree slightly with what Eddie Hearn said, where he said, um, Adam Azim is ducking Dalton Smith. Like, let's do the fight now. So like, why do it now? Because let's face it, you're putting your health on the line, right? You want to get paid. Why not wait till Adam has, Adam Azim has had a few more fights, Dalton Smith's had a few more fights? Because not being funny, I did Dalton Smith a couple of years ago, and I think the casual boxing fan didn't. But now everyone's starting to know who Dalton Smith is with this hype between them both. Let it get big. I let it bubble. Get them both a shitload of money. And at the same time, it will be a spectacle for the fans. Right? I, you know, I, I I don't like that view about. I think that's ri- that's typically where boxing's fallen short. What, you about know, compared the, about to the money, MMA, about waiting too long. I think actually what you're seeing right now with Saudi, I know Saudi are actually paying the money to um, to mm. do it. Um, so the timing's happened, but there's a there's a, a severe a very increase. Fine line, I think in there's an increase of... now in the you know in people just loving boxing now. People look at you know Bivol about to fight mm. at, uh, um, at the best. Yeah, game, I love that one. You know? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. We would have never expected that fight to happen. You know, that's what I like. That Saudi have come into the picture because now bo- it has come down to them because now boxers can't say no. There's too much money on the line. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I think so, for Fury Joshua, I don't think Fury would have ever took the Joshua fight unless there was enough money on the line. Yeah, and now they can't say yeah. no, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think it's um, I don't like the view when they try and wait for the right time. You know, mm-hmm. I think just have the fight. Do you think just have it? I think so. Like now, would I you? think what needs to change, yeah. right, is the fact that it's, and it's post Mayweather era, mm-hmm. right? Before Mayweather. That's right. I think it's all no changed. No one cared about. No one cared about losing about that, the, losing uh, and come back. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. it's all about protecting that. But even yeah. I mean, look, look, last year, you know, you had two, you had Crawford and um, Spence mm. get together, right? But they both put it all on the line. One mm. man lost. Yes, obviously mm. Crawford's raised in everyone's eyes, but mm. no one's lost that much respect for you know lost respect for Spence. So mm. he'll build himself back up. You know, same with Ryan Garcia lost. I was his just about to say Ryan all Garcia. These, all these yeah, big yeah. super fights have happened recently, and p- these guys have lost their O's. And now, but they're still prepared to get back. Yeah. I think boxing is now moving to that state whereby you can lose, yeah. you know, but you can come back. You know, you look at the Hagler Hearns days. You know, yeah, no yeah. one cared about Oof, losing. Yeah. You know, it's like you go back again. We do the trilogy. I, I you love know? that. It's like, they were the days. Yeah, yeah but I've, mate, I think boxing is coming. Going to come back to that. Yeah, let's talk about the um, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. That's one thing I like about Ryan Garcia. He's taking all the big fights. Obviously, he fought Javonta, uh, and now he's put himself forward for this one. There's been a lot of questions asked about Ryan Garcia's mental state. Uh, going into this fight, what, what are your thoughts on it and what he's been saying? <laughs> um, I think obviously it's shocking some of the stuff. You just like, yeah. whoa, this is I haven't seen this side of you before. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you don't know what his his game is. Like yeah. that people see what is this they a game want plan? you to see, right? <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, a game yeah. plan. So he seems to be, you know, seems he seems to be training. Yeah, you know, seems to be confident that the fight's going to happen. Yeah. Um. If anything, he's brought a lot of more eyes on it. Mm. You know, it has massive. Um. So yeah. he could just be a genius here. Mm. Um. Other things, right? Who am I to say anything? If it is, he, he is a genius. If this is all a, a game plan, he's yeah. a pretty genius because he's definitely got more eyes on this fight. Yeah, now, definitely, he? definitely, definitely. And I think sometimes that's you. You got to play the role right in the build. You know, I, I, tell, I tell you what, it's the, the other, other side of it, right. He's so genuine. Yeah. Such a genuine person. Like yeah. I think that's what. That, that, it's quite w- warming when you listen to him. You say you had a couple of conversations yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say I know him well, but yeah. I know enough about him. Yeah, yeah, I spoke yeah. him enough to know that he's just a genuine person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, let him do him. It's funny because obviously he's, he's come out with some some big things. And I think the crazy thing is, regardless of whether he's mentally not, not in a good space or whatever it is, 
I think people still acknowledge the fact that a lot of what he's saying could well be true. And it, yeah. pr- and it probably is true and it probably does happen, but nobody can do anything about it, which is why a lot of people are telling him, just shut the fuck up and yeah. don't say anything. You're going to get yourself into trouble, but it's crazy, right? Yeah. Like I think a lot of people know what he's saying. He could well be having a mental breakdown, but even if he is, what he's saying, we all know it happens. Definitely. And definitely. Yeah. It, it's crazy stuff, right? But I think that's why there's so much more now intrigue in this fight. But can you pick a winner on this one? Uh, the, uh, yeah, go on. I'll let you I go. Think, I think Garcia has been on his training camp. Mm. Um, I think there's a chance that he's going to clip Haney. Mm. Um, I think if Haney brings his A game, it's going to be a points, points victory. And what the casual fan might say is quite a boring fight. Mm. Um, so who, who are, uh, typically when you don't have a call cool fight so I typically say how I think one person win or how the other person mm. win I typically will, will, will always mm. get it right picking the actual winner um, come on Ben you gotta commit to one it's that complicated it's, it's hard it is I think it's Garcia can clip him yeah. if he clips him um, I think he, he, he can knock Haney out yeah. um, and I think if Haney if he goes the distance and he will win on points, okay. and, it'll be, right. and it'll be quite That's fair. quite a boring. Not is there a boring fight for for me, but you know people will be like, "It's a shit fight." Slightly yeah. down the middle, but I'll I'll, I'll take that as a prediction. But uh, nah, it'll be an exciting fight, I think. And yeah, it's, it's one that I'm probably down the middle as well. But I'll, I'd probably think Haney will uh, Haney will take it. But one thing I do like about Ryan Garcia, and it's the same for the Javante fight, even though I know he lost and he got stopped, he was trying to take the fight. Hmm. Javante, he was taking risks. Yeah, he knew he was taking risks because yeah. how good is Javante on those yeah. explosive counters, right? Yeah. So, so he took the risk. He was going forward. He was trying to make a fight of it, which is what the fans want to see. And he yeah. acknowledges that. Listen, these big fights aren't getting made. And I did go for a little bit of a period where I was getting a bit bored of boxing. So, it's good to see somebody who's who's taking the lead and yeah. taking on these big fights because no one, no one's knocking him for it. He's not trying to protect exactly. his own like we spoke exactly. about. It's, it's changing the whole landscape of. You know the idea of losing an O. Yeah. You know, whereas, and you know, if anything, it's like okay, you can lose your O, but keep make making yeah. sure you invest in yourself and your own personal brand, right? Yeah. Which you know a lot of boxers put last. Mm. Um. So I think it's paving the way for a lot more boxers to you know, get an yeah. O and still still carry on and still go for those mega fights. Yeah. No, definitely. But um, yeah, no, that was it from uh, from me, Ben. It, it was a, it was a great chat, and it was good to catch up after what. Yeah. 15 years of boxing yeah, together man. at Red Corner Amateur Boxing Club. No, it was it was great to catch up again. And I'm excited to hear about the launch of, obviously, the new boxing gloves, uh, whenever that does happen, and same for the, for the boxing boots as well. Um, can't wait to give those both a try. And, uh, yeah, thank you for coming on, mate. No, Re- really you. appreciate it. Appreciate the chat. Yeah, it was a good chat, and man. Take care, um, man.